Um, attainable, sustainable. Many of you probably already know my next guest, Chris Bordessa. Chris, welcome to Chewing the Fat. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Good to, good to talk to you today. Uh, we're talking about, oh my gosh, the title of the book, Attainable Sustainable. Oh, and you Amazing. have it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It's a great name. Uh, I don't know how you came up with it though. Uh, many of us are, you know, find it difficult in today's world to attain sustainability, uh, outside of, uh, you know, running to uh, the Walmart grocery store and the Kroger grocery store, but, uh, some that are past the age of, you know, my age, uh, remember their, uh, folks and their grandparents canning and gardening and growing things and uh really in today's world like your book says it's the lost art of self-reliant living Mm -hmm. and uh i mean you know as well as anyone the struggles that uh people have we just had the problem here in texas where i where i broadcast from this past week and uh i'm fortunate to have my wife who is uh you know uh a sustainability uh human being so i felt pretty good no problem no with with no problem we were good i knew we were good but a lot of people really struggled and uh, people are still struggling because they weren't really prepared and uh this book incredible i was going through it this morning uh looking at it like this is stuff that i mean it is a lost art isn't it yeah, it really is. I, you know, I think that we've done the past couple of generations a disservice by not um, not passing some of that that knowledge down. You, right. you know, like like you, I had um, parents who you know, my mom was canned all the time, so I grew up and I had that base, and I knew a little bit, you know, how to um, how to move into that. I and, wish I would have paid more attention. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, but there's you know a whole generation or two who haven't ever seen that, so it's. They're having to learn something just brand new, Completely you know, new. rather than yeah. um, than having at least that base knowledge. Right now, so as we go through the book, and I could spend you know hours with you, and I know that um, how much would fun would that be, you and me for <laughs> hours? But uh, I know you're backed up today, so let's just I we'll just break down the book real quick. I see that there's you know there's six chapters, so mm-hmm. we'll go through each chapter and give you know when we start at chapter one, which is well, I think my favorite eat that's everybody's uh, right uh what's let's let's do like the top thing that comes to your mind in each chapter that's most important eat who eat uh, i know uh, uh, the most important thing in the eat chapter to me would be the ooh, that's a hard one um the, the diy pantry learning how to make our own pantry goods um ourselves rather than buying that salad dressing in a plastic bottle, what have you, that that's going to help. It's going to, you know, work, be good for your budget and it's going to help you eliminate some of the plastics you're bringing into the house and, right. and the yucky ingredients too. Right. So most importantly, the pantry. Right. Yeah. Let's, learn, let's, learn let's, let's get that pantry. Things. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, make. And then that goes back to your pantry, right? I mean, really, it kind of ties together. Amazing how it all ties together. Yeah, everything is, yeah, everything is connected. The um, the make section, um, uh, gosh, I got, I just, I got to go with quilting. I got to go with quilting. Oh because, yeah, okay. You know, because it's a way to turn something that is uh, no longer of use, a torn shirt, what have you, into something functional and beautiful. Uh, clean. Yeah. Number three, clean under the uh, part one indoors yeah. of attainable, sustainable. And clean is funny because it, it covers a lot of ground. It covers both, you know, household cleaning kind of stuff and personal care uh, product. Yeah. And, you know, the 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 one thing in, in this, this, this is going to maybe make people question, you know, uh, raise their eyebrows a little bit. <laughs> the one thing in there that I absolutely love and I, I use it every day is the tallow bomb. Uh, it's a, a moisturizer, that, and it is actually made with beef tallow, um, and, and which, you know, if somebody had told me 10 years ago I'd be be using that, I would have laughed, but it is <laughs> it is the best uh, moisturizer. It's, it's wonderful. Now, is that coming from uh, your herd out back? No. Do I have to have a herd? No, actually, not at all. I don't, I don't keep cows. I don't have space here to keep cows. 
Um, I, I picked up the tallow at my local butcher shop that, um, they bring in all local, local beef uh-huh. and they prepare the tallow there. Right. Uh, just as a side note now, and maybe we get to that uh, as we go to part two of the book, uh, Attainable, Sustainable, we will. Uh, but how uh, how many animals do you have? Do you have any animals or do you just go to the local butcher store and say, hey, uh, you know, I'll take that chicken there? Um, no, actually, we raise chickens um, and, and I do butcher chickens here. Um, yeah. And I have I don't I a flock of close to 20 hens right now that are egg laying. Um, wow. So yeah, I have those. What does that uh, get for you? 20 hens laying eggs. What are you, how many, what are you producing a day from that? Close to a dozen a day. Wow. Okay. That's not yeah. bad. Close, close to a dozen eggs, eggs a day. Are they, uh, are, are they, uh, and here we go. I, again, I could go for another hour. But are <laughs> they, uh, specific uh secret chickens mailed in from brazil or are they just uh, regular chickens from uh, the u.s they're just they're they're regular chickens and as soon as you ask that question the breed just just completely left my brain okay um, but i mean the eggs are not uh special colors or anything i mean they're it, just regular, you know they're brown yeah 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 they're regular brown eggs i don't have i i really i would like to have some of the the green and blue eggs right yeah, yeah. just because it's fun but i i have this breed uh, uh delaware breed is what they are sorry um they are specifically they're, they're good for meat and egg production so right. i like to keep them i can remember so i you know i can remember as a really little kid uh watching the uh the chopping off of the chicken heads in the farm when i was a real little kid yeah. you know butchering the chickens and thinking you know what? I don't know. I don't know. It, you know what? It's I, I, I struggled with it. It was a hard thing to shift into, but I feel very strongly that if I'm going to eat chickens or or, or meat, it it, it right. really it is good for me. I've had people say, "How in the world can you possibly eat a chicken like that?" And and I'm not sure what they <laughs> where they think their chickens came from. Right, but that you is know. right. It's yeah. different when it's in the uh, when it's in the grocery store, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, so a, there's a disconnect. It's it's a mindset that, and and I don't, you know, it's not my favorite chore. Um, but my my sure. have my boys here. My boys help me. Uh, we all have our own parts that we do, sure. and we get through it. And um, but but I know where the food came from. Right. So, I mean, I mean that that's what's important about you know the book and uh, you know even a lifestyle, not necessarily a prepper lifestyle, but you know, being prepared, right. Is being, uh, realizing that you're attaining sustainability. You might not get it, but it's important. I I spent years in Florida. We had hurricanes that we had to worry about. Now I'm in Texas. I'm worrying about snowstorms and ice storms. I mean, (laughs) it's the same kind of thing, right? So when you talk about, uh, part two is farm. Uh, so what do you guys, do you have the, you know, the acre garden, uh, on the corner of the field or are you doing more than that? Um, we have here, so I'm in Hawaii. Um, okay. I don't, okay. So, so what we grow here looks a little bit different maybe than what, what you'd be growing. Okay. Um, things that grow well there, like zucchini, I cannot grow. Well, um, I mean, that's part of knowing where you live too, right? I mean, and, and that's it is, is I've had to learn and it took me a while because I used to have just an amazing garden in California where I grew up. And to come here and have to change and realize, oh, I cannot, you know, I, you, you grow zucchini because it's prolific, right? Um, yeah. And it's not prolific here. It's, and it, there's just no sense doing that. So, so I cannot do that. Um, so yeah, I've got a number of really large raised beds. And I also have a number of taro patches uh, where we grow what is the uh, uh, starchy root crop. That, that grows okay. well here. Um, it's what, what they make koi out of so, that a lot of people may be familiar with. So most importantly, I mean, if you're going to farm, we need to, uh, you know, concern ourselves with where you live and what grows in your, in your area, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I always say, talk to your cooperative extension office, talk to your neighbor and find out what's doing well and, and plant that. And uh, the last chapter uh, is Trek. Uh, mm. What do you mean by that? I mean, get outside. I, <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, uh, I, I mean that. I mean that's exactly it, right? It, is get outside, yeah. go hiking, find out if you've got a regional park where you can go 
explore and and right. see the trees that are growing. But you know, we've gotten so, and here I am on my computer talking to you. Of course, we've gotten so um, intent on on working, and we've got the computer, and we're indoors, and we've got the TV. You know, take a sketchbook outside and go um, go see what's happening out there, and pay attention. Important. I know we're up against the clock here, but there's a couple little things here. One is the tools every homesteader should have. Most important tool. Oh, gosh. Most you're impo- you're going to make me remember what's a on knife, the list. An um, axe. A, okay, a blowtorch. So, <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think that list has canning jars on it. And, oh, and yeah. you know, canning jars, I mean, you can hardly go wrong with those. You're going to use them for food preservation. You can use them to store dry right. goods. You know, they're they're pretty handy. I use them for, for keeping everything in. And they look so darn nice in that pantry that and we started it off with, doesn't it? And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Attainable, sustainable. Chris Bordessa. Chris, you can obviously follow her on her blog and her website, Attainable, Sustainable. But uh, the book is a must-have, no question, put out by National Geographic, Attainable, Sustainable. Chris, thank you so much for joining me thank on you. Chewing the Fat today. Uh, it was great. It was great. Yeah, you have a good day.